Hey there, so if you were following along with my last tutorial, I walked through making a poseable base mesh for a hand, and just about every technique here remains the same. In fact, we're going to take that hand and copy it in so we can take advantage of the work we've already done. But there's just a couple more gotchas when it comes to making something that is uh, symmetrical in ways that a hand isn't. So here I have the beginnings of this figure. Uh, I added in the, the pelvis, the rib cage, the neck, and the head, all down the center line here. And then I've also got a, uh, a ball for the shoulder, and an upper arm and a lower arm. And you can see that I've added in a loop cut so I can bulge that bicep slightly and then bulge the, uh, the forearm slightly as well. Uh, so these are laid out in space. In some cases, the origin is right there in the center. In the case of this object, the origin is uh, right there. And the origin here is right there. Now the origins for these objects, it looks like I've already set it, but I want to show you the process of doing this because these two objects need to have their origins right here in the middle. Uh, and then the head has to pertain to the neck has to pertain here. So, so we'll do that real quick. And we're going to uh, accomplish this by shift A adding in which known, uh, what's known as an empty. Uh, so here the empty just um, automatically drops down here on the origin where the 3D cursor is. And all the empty does is, is just remember kind of a collection of objects and their um, cumulative location and space. So I'll grab this thing, constrain it to Z, and I want to move it kind of right up here into the middle. OK, so that's going to be the point from which I'll grab and move these things around. Uh, you know, I would go through this process, right, if I hadn't done these yet, that I would um, maybe move the, uh, the origin point or the 3D cursor up to here, and then I would switch the origin of the rib cage and the pelvis and so on. But we already did that in the hand tutorial, so go check that if you're not entirely sure. So I grab the rib cage and then the empty, Command P and Object. Grab the pelvis and the empty command P and object and so forth, and I'll set up this parenting relationship. Now, also keep in mind this is only going to work if all the transformations have been accepted on these objects. So we want to make sure, and we'll go to um, Control A, and instead of all transformations, really it's just rotation and scale. We want to leave location alone, or else it'll screw things up. So I'll hit rotation and scale. And that'll keep everything looking good. If you find that things like the empty try to drop themselves back down here onto the ground, don't do all transformations, just rotations and scale. And so we can start to see where this is heading. You know, I can rotate the rib cage, and this will come along with it. I could just do the, uh, the neck here real quick as an example. Uh, so let's take this object. We'll tab through so that we can see its surfaces. Go to face selection mode, select that face, shift S, cursor to selected, head back out to object mode, and then we'll say object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and that's kind of how we build this stuff up, right? Okay, so this object to here, command P to parent, this object to here, command P to parent, and so on. And then now we should be able to see, you know, I can rotate the neck and get the head going. I didn't bother to do the origin up here, but you'll do a better job than me. Uh, I can rotate this part and have everything come along. So we'll do the same thing with the arms, right? So these two objects, Command-P, these two objects, Command-P, and these two objects, Command-P. OK, great. So now we're starting to get something. You know, I can move this here. I can move this here, and so on. And then after I do all this great posing, if I select everything, and if my transformations were accepted correctly, now I can go to Option R, and I can remove all of the rotations, right? So now I can pose this thing, get as crazy as I want, and then just snap it back into place with Option R. OK, so let's save this real quick, and then I'm going to head to uh, Open and Hand. And I'll go over here and grab the base mesh of the hand that we made so carefully. Command-C for Copy. And then back to the posable base mesh. Don't save that. OK, now let's paste this guy in here. And initially, it's going to come in in the wrong spot and at the wrong scale. So, And if I remember correctly, I think this one actually might not be fully parented. Let me just check and make sure. Yep, so it looks like my fingers, um, this is just my mistake here, need to get parented over. Yeah, so you want to make sure there's no sort of persistent problems in here you're going to have to deal with before you get too far along. So now I can move this around. Looks like the thumb didn't take. 
that looks good I can scale it that looks good great so let's rotate this guy and get him up into place scale him a little more correctly sometimes I like to make the hands you know a little bit oversized when I'm doing kind of character work uh, just because they're so interesting and we get something going like that cool I don't think I even need to look at the reference image for this uh, all right, so you can see there's one more issue here before we parent these things up because the origin is right here in the middle of the palm. So let's go back to edit mode. And here we want to select out that face. It's giving me a little trouble because of all that density. Oh, maybe it's already selected. Shift S, cursor to selected, back out to object view. And then we say object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And that's starting to look pretty good. OK, let's come in here and make sure that these transformations are accepted as well, because this will be sort of the, the neutral pose of the hand. You know, I think I might actually rotate this thing so it's more naturalistic. OK, great. So we get something like that. And then I say Control A with all that selected, and not all transformations, but just rotation and scale. Uh, so sometimes you'll see this error. If you looked at it carefully, it said cannot apply a multi-user object. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure where this is coming from, but I know how to break it. Uh, I just go up to Object, and then down to Relations, Make Single User, and then Object and data. So we kind of strip all that stuff out. And now I just want to double check, you know, is my parenting still working correctly? Yes. And then I select all this, control A, rotations and scale. And now I no longer have that error. So it, it may have to do with copying between the two files. I'll, I'll have to admit that my uh, Blender Kung Fu has a blind spot there. Okay. And finally, I shift select these two, command P and object. And now what I should be able to see is if I rotate, 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 and so forth, I can get all those set up. But then I come back here and say Alt-R, or Option-R, and everything springs back into place. Awesome. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is how to take this object and mirror it on the other side, but to do so in such a way where we preserve certain kinds of edits, but not every kind of edit. So I'll select everything out right there. And I'm going to put my pen down here so I don't accidentally click anywhere. And I will hit Option D. So that's going to duplicate, but it will duplicate linked. So it'll preserve all those relationships. And then I'll hit Escape. And then watch this trick. Before I click anywhere else, see how this is the Y axis. I'll come over here to Y. And I'll just take that number, make it negative, and hit Enter. <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's not exactly what I was looking for there. Let me undo that. Okay, what did I get wrong here? So right now, these are all coming together. Let's try this again. Okay, so I should just have one copy. So Command, or I'm sorry, Option D for Duplicate, Escape. They're all still selected. And then negative Y. So I really don't know what was different about what I did there. <laughs> Some kind of ghost in the machine. In any case, it's working. So we're close. You know, now we have the shoulder in the correct position. The last thing we will do is right click this new copy. You know, I might have to deselect and then reselect. So I just get the one. Right click it, and I'm going to pick mirror right here. This, this will not work as a modifier. This is a different kind of mirror. And then Y is the uh, axis that we're mirroring on. So I'll pick Y. And there I have my perfectly mirrored arms. Now here's sort of the uh, here's the amazing thing about all of these tricks. So let me go out a little bit. Let me select everything. Just double check. Option R. I shouldn't see anything move. That's awesome. So now I can start to rotate these arms into place. Curses! I got some kind of double here. You're really seeing the uh, tutorial warts and all right now. I find this happens yeah when I undo stuff a lot. Okay, so let's rotate this thing. Hopefully this next part will still work. <laughs> How many copies do I have in here? Rotate, rotate, rotate. So that side's looking good. 
This might not work because I might be deleting the wrong copies. But let's find out. So I'll rotate, rotate like that. And then now what I should be able to do is come in here to the bicep, for example, and I'll hit tab for edit mode. Great. So you can see the two of them are, so it looks like I didn't delete the wrong stuff. If I click here twice in edge selection mode, I'll get that place where the bicep goes all the way around, although I might just need to select it like this. Okay, and then now when I scale it, you'll see that it affects both sides. So if I'm making like a beefy, you know, bodybuilder or something, you want to add in some extra edge loops, maybe scale those as well. It's, it's going to happen on both sides. So it's, it's so uncommon, right, that you would have somebody with one really buff arm and, and one without. So this allows you to kind of layer stuff like that. And then I can just move on from there into sculpting mode, for example. So let's say I shift R and change the resolution of the polys, control R and so forth. So I'll be able to remesh these guys, which I can reveal here in wireframe mode. And then I can get down in here and uh, start sculpting on this thing. So the cool thing about this, right, and it looks like I still have some kind of duplicate object there. So this, this file is just a total mess, but <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. As you can see that um, even though I'm able to position these, uh, these limbs independently, they do still relate to each other in terms of the stuff that we want to keep symmetrical, like the size of the, the muscles inside. So now if I select this whole object and I Option R, you can see I pop it right back into place. It's not going to undo the sculpting that we did, but it is going to undo any of the transformations around rotation. So I haven't shown you the leg, but it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you'll want to sculpt yourself a little, you know, a, a, a foot that's more than like a cylinder or something like that. However, it's not nearly as complicated as the fingers, unless you go for individual toes, uh, but, but that's totally up to you. So hopefully uh, my mistakes will help you not make those mistakes yourself. Uh, give it a try and uh, make a really dramatic pose with your figure.